Good day everyone! Welcome to another lesson about the common terminologies in Assessment in Learning 1. First, let's have a recap on our last discussion. What are the three purposes or types of assessment? We have assessment for learning, assessment as learning, and assessment of learning. Now, what are the differences of the three? Basically, assessment for learning is ongoing, diagnostic, and formative. Assessment as learning actively involves students. It is ongoing and it involves self and peer assessment. And lastly, assessment of learning is given at the end of a unit, grading period, or a term, like a semester. It is summative and it is for grading purposes. This time, we will be talking about measurement, assessment, and evaluation. After this lesson, you will be able to differentiate the common terminologies in assessment in learning one. Let's start with educational measurement. Educational measurement refers to the use of educational assessments and the analysis of data, such as scores obtained from educational assessments, to infer the abilities and proficiencies of students. Educational measurement is the assigning of numerals to traits, such as achievement, interest, attitudes, aptitudes, intelligence, and performance. Measurement, on the other hand, refers to the process by which the attributes or dimensions of some physical object are determined. However, when we measure, we generally use some standard instrument to determine how big, tall, heavy, voluminous, hot, cold, fast or straight something is actually is. Standard instruments refer to physical devices such as rulers, scales, thermometers, pressure gauge, and etc. We measure to obtain information about what it is. Such information may or may not be useful depending on the accuracy of the instrument we use and our skill at using them. Example, we measure how big a classroom is in terms of square feet. We measure the temperature of the room by using a thermometer. And we use an ometer to determine the voltage, amperage, and resistance in a circuit. All these examples are not assessing anything. We are simply collecting information relative to some established rule or standard. Assessment is therefore quite different from measurement. When used in a learning objective, measure defines as to apply a standard scale or measuring device to an object, series of objects, events, or conditions according to practices accepted by those who are skilled in the use of the device or scale. In the field of educational measurement, the quantities and qualities of interest are more abstract, unseen, and cannot be touched. They cannot be observed, thus makes the measurement process in education much more difficult. Because of these, we are going to use the following. First, testing. This is the most common procedure in measuring students' knowledge of the subject matter. And second, perception. Students' knowledge of the subject matter is measured by asking group of experts to rate them in a scale of one to five, with one being the lowest and five being the highest. There are two types of measurement. We have objective and subjective. Objective measurement are more stable type of measurements in the sense that 
repeated measurements of the same quantity or quality of interest will produce more or less the same outcome. Example, testing. It is the most preferred type of measurement whenever they are available. And it does not depend on the person or individual taking the measurements. Regardless of who is taking it, the same measurement values should be obtained when using it. Example of objective is multiple choice type of test. In a multiple choice test, if the answer is letter A, no matter who will check the test paper, the answer will never change. It will always be letter A. That's why it is stable. While in subjective measurement, it is unstable and dependent on the perception of the one doing the rating. And it differs from one assessor to the next, even if the same quantity or quality of interest is being measured. Example of subjective is an essay. It would depend on the checker's perception. If the teacher is into the grammar, flowery words, or the context of the said essay. That is why it is recommended that teachers should not know the name of the writer while checking an essay. And also, teachers should use rubrics. Let's move on to indicators, variables, and factors. Variable is a quantity or function that may assume any given value or set of values. An educational variable denoted by an English alphabet like X is a measurable characteristic of a student. It may be directly measurable, example, the age of student and the height of student. Most often cannot be directly measured, example, class participation of a student. Indicators. They are the building blocks of educational measurement upon which all other forms of measurement are built. A group of indicators constitute a variable. They were introduced when direct measurements are not available. An indicator, or I, denotes the presence or absence of a measured characteristics. Example. For the variable class participation, we will represent it with letter X. We can let the indicators or I's represent the participation of a student in the total number of recitations represented by the small letter N. And let X equals the sum of the I's divided by the N or the recitations. Or, let the class participation X equals the sum of the participation of student in the recitation or I's divided by the total number of recitation or the small letter N. So, it will be X equals the sum of I's divided by N. Thus, if the total number of recitation is equal to 10 and the student indicated participation is equal to 5, then x equals 5 divided by 10 or 50%. Therefore, the class participation of the student is only 50%. Next is factors. A group of variables form a construct or a factor. It is formed through a group of variables and the variables which form a factor correlate highly with each other, but have low correlations with variables in another group. Example, the following variables were measured in a battery of test. X1 equals computational skills. X2 equals reading skills. X3 is vocabulary. X4 is logic and reasoning. X5 sequence and series, and x6 equals to manual dexterity. These variables can be grouped and be referred to as follows. We have group 1, 
x1, x4, and x5 equals mathematical ability factor. So x1, computational skills, x4, logic and reasoning, and x5, sequences and series, they are again mathematical ability factor. Group 2, x2 and x3, they are considered as a language ability factor, reading skills and vocabulary. And group 3, psychomotor ability factor, that is x6, manual dexterity. In educational measurement, we shall be concerned with indicators, variables, and factors of interest in the field of education. Next is assessment. Assessment is the process of gathering evidences of students' performance over a period of time to determine learning and mastery of skills. Now, why do we assess? To know if students can apply what they have learned in authentic situations. Why is it important to assess? First, to find out what the students know, that is knowledge. Next, to find out what the students can do and how well they can do it, that is skill or performance. Third, to find out how students go about the task of doing their work, that is process. And to find out how students feel about their work, that is effort or motivation. Now, what are the functions of assessment? We have formative, summative, diagnostic, and placement. Let's start with formative assessment. Formative assessment tells us how well the student is doing as work progresses. It allows the teacher to redirect and refocus the course of teaching a subject matter. Examples, quizzes, and exit tickets. Second is summative. It tells us how well the student did at the end of a unit or task. It determines the extent to which learning objectives for a course are met and why. Example, final examination and periodical test. The third is diagnostic, determining the gaps in learning or learning processes, hopefully to be able to bridge this gap. Diagnostic tells us what the student needs to learn. Example, we have the SRA or the Science Research Associates, where after finishing the set, students will be diagnosed of their problems on grammar, vocabulary, comprehension, and others. The fourth is placement, determining the appropriate area where the student could do well, both in terms of achievement and aptitude. It tells us where a student would most likely excel. Example is the NCAE, or the National Career Assessment Examination. It is a test taken by high school students in the Philippines that determines their strengths in different career fields. Let's move on to the last terminology, that is, evaluation. Evaluation is the process of gathering and interpreting evidence regarding the problems and progress of individuals in achieving desirable educational goals. It can help educators determine the success of their academic programs and signal efforts to improve student achievement. In summary, we measure height and weight. We assess learning outcome. And we evaluate results in terms of some criteria or objectives. That's it. Again, the three common terminologies are measurement, assessment, and evaluation. I hope you learned something in our session. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening, and have a good day. Bye!